So after looking at area of the triangle using coordinates, let us now focus our attention to again a two point system and one dimensional objects that is a line. We have already seen in our basic classes that two points uniquely determine line. Now if I want to characterize a line and if I give you two points, I should be able to find a line passing through these two points. How that quantity is that geometric object is algebraically related to the coordinate geometry. That is what we want to explore now. To explore that, I need a concept of a slope of a line. So what essentially is the slope of a line? In a vague manner, what we understand by slope of a line? If you look at the horizontal, uh, this coordinate plane which is displayed here, if I am moving some units in x directions, the question can be asked with respect to this with respect to this change in x direction, what is the corresponding change in y direction? Okay. So, if I want to answer that question, then I need to consider a ratio of change in y direction to change in x direction. Some people call it as rise by run ratio. Run is in the horizontal direction, rise is in the vertical direction. So, you can consider slope of a line as a rise by run ratio. So, let us try to make this concept more clear by showing some examples. So, now here is a line with two points given on to it. Again our standard conventional method, we will construct a right angle triangle using these two points. Now, the question that I posed is what is a rise by run can be answered over here. For example, if you look at this right angle triangle, what is happening? This is the movement of a line in moving from this point to this point in y direction. This vertical length is the direction is the movement of a line in moving from this point to this point in y direction and this horizontal line is a movement in x direction while moving from point A to B in on a line. Okay. So essentially what I need to capture is the, the change in this direction from this point to this point that means here to here that is minus 2 comma minus 4 that is minus 6 in moving from here to here that is minus 2 comma minus 4 minus 2 minus 4 that means minus 6 and here also minus 6. So, the slope of a line can be equal to 1. This we can make it more precise by giving some formal definitions. So, if I want to find the slope of a line given the coordinate plane. I can always identify these two points as x1, y1 and x2, y2. I will construct a right angle triangle. I will construct a right angle triangle which intersects the point at x2, y1 and once I constructed as I mentioned you know what is the change in x direction and what is the corresponding change in y direction. Therefore, you can actually compute the ratio of this and uh, but while computing the ratio, you can also think remember some concept from trigonometry. For example, when I constructed this right angle triangle, there is some angle formed over here, this arc denotes that angle. Let us call that angle as theta. Right? Now, what I am saying is change in y upon change in x, but can you relate some quantity related to this trigonometric ratio that is tan of theta. Right? So, what I can say is my m or the slope of a line is mb, mb by am which is y1 minus y2 upon x1 minus x2 and which is also equal to tan theta.
right. So, I have introduced two uh, I have defined one thing that is m which is the ratio of these two, but which in turn turned out to be equal to tan theta. So, if it is tan theta, see here it does not matter whether I take y1 minus y2 or y2 minus y1, whatever I am doing I should do synonymously. For example, if I have taken y2 minus y1, then I should take x2 minus x1, or if I have taken y1 minus y2, then I should take x1, uh, then I should take x1 minus x2. So, it does not matter which order you are swapping because finally you are taking the ratio. Right. Whatever you are doing, you do it asynchronously. You do it in sync, so so that there won't be any confusion. So m is tan theta. Now I have introduced two terminologies here, m and theta. So let us define them properly. This m is called slope of a line, which is what we are, which is the topic of this discussion, and then this theta is called inclination of a line with respect to positive x axis measured in a anti clockwise direction. Now, somebody may say I have drawn this angle over here, but if you look at this particular line, this line is parallel to x axis and this line is intersecting x axis here. That means, even if I consider this angle, this angle also will be theta from the basics of geometry. So, now how far the question can be asked how far the theta can go ok. So, to answer that question let us try to see if I am considering a theta then theta can be equal to 0, theta equal to 90 degrees tan is not defined as you can see tan of 90 is not defined, but it can go up to 180 degrees. So, the theta the variation of theta allowed is 0 to 180 degrees. So, now let us have a look at the salient features of the slope of a line. In particular let us see if the line is parallel to x axis the angle of inclination is 0 degrees. Therefore, the slope of a line should be 0. Now, if the angle is 90 degrees that means 90 degrees with respect to x axis that means eventually I am on y axis or in fact I am on y axis. In such case tan 90 is undefined okay. therefore slope is undefined. As you can see if I have an uh, angle which is 90 degrees that is y axis that means x is equal to constant is the equation of the line and you cannot have any movement in y direction or you can have infinite movement in y direction without any change in x direction. That itself creates a problem therefore, the slope is undefined for uh, theta is equal to 90 degrees or the angle of inclination is equal to 90 degrees, inclination is equal to 90 degrees. So, with respect to inclination there is another definition of slope if theta is the inclination of a line L then tan theta is called slope or gradient of the line. This is the definition another second definition of our slope of a line which matches exactly with the original definition, but there, there will be some glitch there may be some confusion ambiguity. So, let us try to resolve that ambiguity because this theta is the angle made with respect to positive x axis. Right. And theta not equal to 90 degrees, I can define m is equal to tan theta. That is perfectly fine and it is well defined over there whenever it is not equal to 90 degrees. What is the ambiguity? The ambiguity can be shown in the figure. For example, now what is theta over here? Theta over here is actually this particular angle, this is theta. Now, if you look at this particular angle which is theta, you can see that this is an obtuse angle. Now, how to evaluate a tan of this angle? 
we already know some methods but will that contradict with our definition of slope that is the question so if i use the rise by run formula or the change in y to ch uh, uh, upon change in x formula how will i figure out the slope so the answer is i will simply drop a perpendicular or i will construct a right angle triangle with right angle at point m which is minus 4 comma minus 2 in that case i will be interested in this angle that is angle at a in our older definition or this angle is essentially equal to 180 minus theta of this angle this angle is 180 minus theta so let us go further this angle is equal to this angle what is the measurement of this angle it is 180 minus theta that means if i want to find a slope according to our definition that is delta y by delta x or change in y by change in x then i need to consider the angle of this particular structure that is tan of 180 minus theta right so m is tan of 180 minus theta now what is tan of 180 minus theta if you use simple trigonometric formula you will get tan of 180 minus theta is nothing but minus tan theta but what is minus tan theta you can easily see what is minus tan theta which will be y1 minus y2 upon x1 minus x2 so in short our formula for slope is consistent no matter which definition we use therefore a slope of a line is uniquely determined given a line